assuming he's probably going to get teat on Tuesday, I guess, because you talk about his role in the defense and sort of how you can, how having a guy like Nick to play, you know, locked in defense sort of keys the rest in. It's really a luxury uh, to have a guy like Nick Mellon. He uh, can cover, a, you know, a big, strong guy, a small, quick guy. He's got very, uh, very good feet. He's very athletic. So it's nice to have that versatility, and he's got very good speed and good stick handling ability. So if he uh, comes up with the ball at the def defensive end of the field and get it to the offensive end and be a threat. So a good all-around player. Nice to have a guy that seems to be able to uh, cover everybody's best attackman or best player in some cases. Uh, so he's played very well for us this year. Mm -hmm. And then I guess with the team matchup, is there anything that you look at in that, or is anything other than out of the ordinary because of you know, team one of the most prolific guys in the country right now, or is it just sort of same old, same old? Um, well, I, you know, I think Nick knows him fairly well. And uh, Teet's a great player, he, and he's got eyes in the back of his head. I mean, he just knows where the rest of his offense is on the field. And he even, uh, it's kind of amazing, he even he have lead passes. So you don't see that a lot in lacrosse. You tend to throw it to the man where he'll put it out in front of somebody and, and kind of put the ball in space where they should be. Uh, so tremendous player. Nick's, uh, I think, has done you know fairly well against him in, in the past, has been able to put the ball on the ground. Uh, we've shut him off at times with Nick, uh, so he can't get the ball and see uh, what the other five players on offense will do. Uh, so we're, we're still working at it at this point in time, but uh, we're comfortable with Nick on, on Teat. What have you seen from Cornell's offense as a whole, having watched them uh, at a game earlier this year? I mean, it seems like a pretty potent attack. Yeah, they, yeah their attack is a strength, and you know they run too many lines. And if you look at their stats from last year, they had good production, especially out of that first midfield group. So it, it's a it's a dangerous group. They work well, and, and you know Teet's playing with uh, you know one of the tackling they played with in high school. So it'd be interesting to look up the stats and and see how many assists uh, he has to his old high school teammate. Uh, and then Piatelli's playing much better this year. He's more of a threat with the ball. He's dodging well. He's seeing the field pretty well. And uh, the, the group of minis are you know also they move well without the ball. They do some good things, and they they've got some Dodgers in that group too. So it's a good offensive group. Have you guys looked back at last year's game at all? I remember that being kind of a you know disappointing outcome for you guys. Yeah, a, a little bit. Uh, you know, they obviously return more players offensively than they do defensively. So that you know, if you look at the stats, that you you want to go out, and you want to be as efficient as you can on faceoffs, and you want to keep the ball at your offensive end of the field and away from that uh, you know offensive team at, at Cornell. Um, you know, one of the things I've stressed so far this week is we, we can't have a game like uh, Notre Dame where we have 14 turnovers in the first half, which is 14 more times we've given the ball back to that offense. Uh, you know, we, we won't have good results in that. So we, we need to be patient offensively, smart offensively. They're definitely more of a, a, a team-oriented defense. They want to come early from the crease. And then they are individually. You're not going to hold and just rely on their matchups. So we've got to understand what they're doing, and we've got to be patient. I mean, we've got to take good shots against a you know a freshman goaltender. What uh, what do you see on the film against Hobart that you feel like you could take into this game in terms of getting off to a better start against a team that can match you offensively, certainly like Cornell? Yeah, well, I, you know, against Hobart, I, I think we competed. Uh, you know, I think that we we ran our offense better. There were you know we had some turnovers in the first half, but fewer than we did the week before, and that's what we want to do. We want to get better uh, taking care of the ball. And, uh, you know, I think that obviously the defense was stingy, and, and to have Drake Porter come up with 19 saves, uh, that's a good thing. And to, to hold any team, you know, scoreless in the second half, uh, you're doing something right defensively. How much does they add to the game that they were the team that uh, ended the season last year, or is revenge kind of an overblown thing among you know, the next season? Yeah, you know, uh, right now I think we're just foc refocusing more on who they are. Uh, we obviously have a little more time to prepare for them, uh, not playing on, on Saturday or Sunday this week. So, you know, I, you know, maybe with the guys, but I haven't heard a lot of the, the, the revenge stuff. It's, uh, th first we have to know who they are.